โอเคขอบคุณครับอาจารย์สุริชัยวันแก้ว and uh, good morning to everyone uh, distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen ambassadors and others and I will not be able to mention everyone and students are also here I do permit me professor Surishai if let me share the screen uh, just one I hope I will be able to do it um, I I'm not sure if everyone can see this or not. We can, can see we can see it, but please okay. uh, please open the PPT. Yeah, it's not yet huh? open. It's not yet open. Okay, one minute. <laughs> we only see the name of the file. Okay, one minute. <laughs> uh, let me see. I already opened it, no? Huh? Can you see it? Yep. Now, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Yep. Clear. I just rather can see your PowerPoint already. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, um, um, thank you also to the organizers for uh, uh, having me here. Um, and in particular, I would like to also express my sincere gratitude to Professor Sutipan Jirathiwat. Uh, who uh, have put me in this difficult situation, okay, to speak on, uh, about, to speak about ASEAN. So basically uh, this uh, presentation is okay, um, because I, I, I am of that uh, neo-realism school, or so whatever you want to call it, okay. Um, I would like to argue that, you know, this is what state members, okay, or basically ASEAN member states could compromise, could agree on something, okay? In the context of BRI led by China and Indo-Pacific led by the United States, okay? Um, I will divide this uh, presentation in, uh, basically it's based on uh, the paper that I'm trying to write for Jan Sutipan, okay? So it's uh, four sections all together, but I will not be talking about um, neo-realism or anything like this because I think 15 minutes, uh, I will try to focus on the interview and some documentary research that I've got uh, from to share with you. Now, um, basically, I think uh, the ASEAN uh, outlook on Indo-Pacific, okay? Um, uh, this, I think we can all read from there and all uh, took place in 2019, mid-year. And um, of course, you know, AOIP came out and there were criticisms about it. So um, this is what I have found the most, um, the, the, the terms that um, people use in criticizing say OIP, you know, uh, like um, AOIP seems to be repetitive. It reflects, you know, um, ASEAN's um, obvious stand or whatsoever. It reads diplomatic, it's not vigorous, you know, it, lay, it lacks mechanism strategies regarding ASEAN and so on. So this is a kind of uh, uh, background that I have with regard to this uh, paper, which of course extracted in the form of presentation here. Now, um, what happened is that uh, what I want to argue basically, you know, is that, um, you know, the AOIP, okay, especially when you also combine it with the chairman statesman on the ASEAN leaders meeting, which was held on 24th April this year in Indonesia, okay, with regard to Myanmar coup, I think it tells us something that, you know, there is uh, a natural situation that ASEAN is going through, okay. And what are these kinds of uh, situations, which I can come back to these slides later on, but because I have only 15 minutes, so I'll try to uh, focus uh, on what I have found out from uh, interviews and, and, and my research, okay? Now, okay, undoubtedly, uh, with regard to the mechanism thing and so on, um, 
it's, I mean, you know, some criticisms, I mean, went beyond even what's written in the paper or in the statement and so on. Okay? But the main thing is that, you know, what I have found from my research is that um, there is no unity, central, centrality among ASEAN member states. Okay. And I think this is, of course, you know, not a new argument at all, but uh, I would like to actually find out what are the kinds of ideas, what are the kinds of reasons, okay, that uh, the 17 uh, people that I interviewed, including diplomats and former diplomats from ASEAN countries and even some of them outside ASEAN, the way they see it, so on. But uh, so there's no centrality undoubtedly, but at the same time, uh, this uh, uh, no centrality or no unity uh, finding okay, is largely based upon okay, the context of BRI and Indo-Pacific geopolitics. Okay? So um, basically um, the AOIP is, um, is to cater to defend national interests as such. Now, at the same time, you know, um, in this uh, study or um, a kind of a pre preliminary research, okay, I have also uh, found that okay, there are fundamental similarities and differences also between ASEAN today and ASEAN in the past, okay, ASEAN in the Cold War age and ASEAN in the aftermath of the Cold War, especially with the concepts of non-interference. Okay? Now, this particular research, okay, by Surapong uh, Chayanam, which I'm holding in my hand right now here, is the first of its kind, okay, using the so-called classified documents of MFA, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Thailand, okay, to uh, basically, uh, let me explain to you here first why this particular research is so important, which I have uh, put it here in my, my slide here, okay? It's called Thai Kap Asian Nayuk Song Kram Yen, Miti Dan Kan Mueng Lek Pa Man Kong. Okay, so the title can be translated as a Thailand and ASEAN in the Cold War era, a political security perspective. Uh, in the past, okay, you cannot use these kinds of documents that uh, former ambassador Surapong Jayanama could use it, China could use it, okay? But there have been, a, there was there was some agreements, okay, uh, between researchers and, and Ministry of Foreign Affairs that before the research could actually be published, okay, research could be published, uh, you can actually uh, use these uh, confidential files of the classified files, okay, and then, uh, before you get the research published, okay, you need permission from uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So I think this is brilliant in terms of you know making a compromise between academia and 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 the world of security. You know because uh, otherwise you know we will be talking about something that we don't actually really know as well, what's going on in the real world as well, right? So um, this is uh, something uh, very important. And of course, from uh, I was given this an honor to be one of the speakers, a reviewers of this uh, particular research, okay? And I think uh, the, this is one of the best uh, pieces of, studies, okay, on, on Thai foreign affairs with regard to ASEAN and so on. So um, what does it tell us? It tells us a lot of things, okay? And it tells us as well that ASEAN member states has always interfered with one another all the time. So if you want to take the word non-interference, okay, okay and what does it actually mean, okay, right? And, 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 and I would say that it's largely under research. Okay. So in other words, it's kind of interaction. Okay. And, and what's so good about this particular uh, uh, research is that it is full of examples. 
and, and the way, of course, you know, uh, who was the director general of Department of Southeast Asian Affairs and whatsoever, the way he selected different kinds of cases, you know, to show us that uh, what are the kinds of problems and so on. I think the best case that I like very much is on the invitation of the president of Israel to, to Singapore, okay? And uh, how each member state reacted to one another and so on with regarding to the concept of interference that I'm interested in. So um, maybe ASEAN in a way is, is uh, um, ASEAN in a way was quite sophisticated Okay, because it allows it, uh, its uh, um, um, certain channels okay, for, for member states to interact and so on. Right? Now, uh, but, but still, um, the concept of interference or non-interference, it is still, um, I think, you know, we need more studies on this as well, so that we understand ASEAN more than before. I, um, I, I think, you know, one thing that you can find from interviews and this kind of research is that there are fundamental differences and similarities, okay, which I've said it before about the interference concept and so on. And especially you have to look at the context how ASEAN evolved within this context. At the same time, okay, I would say that ASEAN with the founding member states plus Brunei later on, six, okay, and then ASEAN uh, 10 after the Cold War, okay, which of course Cambodia was the last country to join uh, in 1999, if I remember correctly, uh, gives you some um, sort of ideas also that uh, unity and centrality okay, is, uh, it has begun to shift it away. Okay? But again, this coincides also with the context, the new kinds of context that we see. You know? So for example, the rise of China, um, I mean, before 2000, you know, it, it was not quite a, an issue among ASEAN member states as such. But ASEAN in two, uh, sorry, China in 2000 or China in 2010, for example, okay, uh, have not been perceived the same level in Asia, among ASEAN member states uh, and so on. Now, uh, according to uh, my interview, okay, according to my interview, which of course um, I will have to go through the code of conduct with regarding to ethics on research and interviews and other kinds of things. So I will uh, just mention to you in general, what, what did I find out from this particular research, okay? Uh, well, uh, unquestionably, um, national interests of each member state is largely shaped by internal and external factors, okay? And uh, the country's stability you know, and the perception of China and the US play quite a vital role, okay, in uh, the context of ASEAN centrality or no centrality among ASEAN, okay. Um, in the interviews also, I found that uh, compatib compatibility with international norm of liberalism, okay, is quite a key word there, okay. So you're talking about different political government style, you're talking about you know, human rights issues and other kinds of things. Okay. South China Sea, okay, this is um, uh, okay, uh, uh, another term, okay, which of course, uh, actually, um, the South China Sea issue at one time was also raised with the United States of America, but it was after uh, Nixon shook hand with Mao Zedong, you know, so America did not pay importance to the concept of China Sea as such also, but today, you know, the importance of China, South China Sea is coming back in, in such a way, so, uh, and now till it's uh, quite contextual in that sort of sense, okay, continuity of BRI. Look, um, a, a, a number of um, uh, 
people here in this webinar um, might not be happy to compare BRI with Indo-Pacific, okay? And, and But that's not my job here. My job is, of course, to, to basically decode the language from the interviews, okay? So what are they trying? What what are these uh, people trying to tell me with regard to to ASEAN centrality and 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 the kind of challenges that they are facing? Okay, so continuity of BRI with clear plan or roadmap. Okay, so, uh, the kind of terms that um, you get all the time, and sometimes the interview moves on this particular topic for a very long time. Okay ambiguity or discontinuity of American interest. Okay. And uh, I was also surprised that, you know, I thought uh, TPP would not be mentioned at all. Okay. So there were some expectations before I interview, but then, you know, uh, CPTPP as we call it now, okay, has come up, okay. Uh, this continuity of Indo-Pacific, okay, Australia was mentioned, okay, and, uh, um, and, and, you know, not sure, you know, how much would it mean for Biden and so on, but again, when they mentioned the word quad, okay, this of course changed after there was a quad meeting early this year, so on. The need, okay, for balance of power, okay, this has been uh, uh, quite uh, a discussion during the interview, okay? Proximity, proximity. Uh, in other words, you know, a uh, number of uh, people who gave interview was very concerned that Southeast Asia, okay? Or especially man mainland Southeast Asia could actually be a kind of battlefield of this geopolitics and so on. Okay, because it's likely to, to have the kind of repercussion and so on in this part of the world, right? Um, then submarine diplomacy, okay, uh, which of course uh, make um, a number of countries uh, uh, quite worried, okay? So you can see that this uh, submarine issue has been there in Malaysia, in Myanmar, in Thailand, okay? And I think uh, we should, of course, uh, she also on the conditions of procurement, purchase, and a whatever you want to see it. Okay. Stability during COVID, okay, uh, is something of a concern. As some diplomats told me that they are uh, actually indicators as well of what does it mean and so on. And then you uh, see the so-called uh, very important concept of war but then some would say that not very important at all, okay? And India, China, Galwan Valley incidents okay, were quite mentioned, were often mentioned as well, right? So it, it um, reflects, okay, that how uh, the concept of uh, not having uh, what you call unity among ASEAN member states can be something about it, okay? Now, um, when it's come to questions like, you know, how, how are you concerned with RC and so on, okay? And uh, undoubtedly, I mean, um, more, all of the in, interviewees were uh, talking about some kind of unity strategy, you know, or something of pragmatism, okay? That we seems not to be having, okay? So I think, uh, um, this morning in the inaugural session, okay, uh, someone mentioned about this as well. Okay, um, ASEAN survival also depends on the you know uh, 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 people in the ASEAN member states as well. Okay, and I think this, of course, um, basically. Um, reflects what many students of mine, you know, have chosen the topic of how insignificant ASEAN has become, you know, with regard to Rohingya, with regard to uh, what's going on in Myanmar, with regard to uh, cooperation uh, for COVID-19 and so on. 
Okay. So, um, but again, um, this is something, you know, that uh, became a, a, quite a concern, okay, quite a concern. But at the same time, you know, it undoubtedly reflects what ASEAN member states are all about right now at this moment. Okay. Um, maybe, you know, um, you can still trust on ASEAN. And I think Professor Mitabhachari also mentioned something that, you know, um, right now um, doesn't seem that ASEAN has any strategy or more cooperation, leverage or whatsoever. But I think um, this natural byproducts of what's going on producing AOIP, you know, might not be adequate, you know, for the future. Okay? And 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 uh, in the interviews also, we have seen that you know, um, ASEAN Charter, uh, um, the the reform of ASEAN, you know, and, uh, finding out the new principle of ASEAN should always be there and so on. So, uh, a roughly, uh, what what I'm I'm trying to say is in here is that you know that uh, I think this is quite a difficult time for ASEAN, but then often you know in history, uh, difficult situations also can become opportunities for ASEAN member states to come up with something uh, tangible, having a same kind of, at least, you know, some kind of direction and so on. So um, this is uh, uh, roughly uh, what I want to say in here. Uh, Professor Surichai, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Tan Surat.